Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the most magical podcast in the Midwest. That's right, the Magic in the Midwest podcast, starring USA Today best-selling author J.B. Michaels and his more successful wife, Ashley Michaels. And now, your host. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the 73rd uh, podcast. Wow. Yes, 7 plus 3 is 10. That's correct. <laughs> this is a random, random yeah. thing. 73. All right. 73, everybody. 73. 73 and sunny. Big deal. Big deal. Okay. Um, so, yes, I am J.B. Michaels, USA Today bestselling author of many books. Um, newest book is called Why the F Do I Need Life Insurance? It's actually um, available uh, online, like, you know, you can get it. Uh, I still have to do a few things, um, um, you know, other pr- marketing-wise, but it is up. Um, but that will be free, um, you know, for people to read. It's very funny um, um, and touching and informative. So I think mm-hmm. it's I think it's solid all around, but we'll see. We'll see. We're going to go a little bit more in-depth into that uh, probably um Maybe on a different podcast completely. Maybe I'll do a MrMichaels.com podcast for that myself. Yeah. You know, not with you. You just gave me a dirty look. So no, that's I just my, my resting bee face. Uh, right, right. Um, and then <laughs> uh, so and then I had a great uh, book signing over the weekend at the Little Traveler in Geneva, Illinois. Um, met some fans. Uh, met some people that already had books for me to sign. Uh, you know, got some, sold some more books. Um, it was a really uh, rewarding, wonderful uh, time at the Little Traveler in Geneva, Illinois. It was it was very fun. I was only there for a couple hours, but it was a good time. Um, so um, yes, check out all the murder mysteries. There's uh, Mac and Millie mysteries, are all murder mysteries set in the town of Geneva, uh, which is a very cute town. And then of course, um, what else is there? Um, uh, yeah, then I write a bunch of supernatural thrillers and holiday action adventures, the Tannenbaum Tailors, which will be amping up uh, uh, marketing for that of sh- soon because, you know, the holidays are upon us. As soon as it hits like September, it's just, it's just suddenly the holidays. Everything just goes. Is, everything is up. Uh, Halloween is like, you know, 40 days away, but it's Halloween now. Like, it's just we don't. Fall, pumpkin <clears throat> spice. <clears throat> right, it's right. It's all happening. It's in full gear, even though it's going to be in the 90s all week. Um, you know, so it's, <clears throat> we're not quite out of summer. Summer's still here, guys. It's, it's you know, a few it more is. days. Another week of summer. You know what? After so, the pool closes, I just, I'd rather be done with it. Right. Who wants like it to people... be 90 and be outside? I mean, I know those people are around. But if I'm not at Disney or I'm not in a pool, pass. Right. Right. So. So if you have an event scheduled and it's outdoors. What and are you that's doing? the weather. I'm probably not going to be going. there. Not going. All right. Peace out. Peace. Peace out. Yeah. Interesting. I feel like you already know this about me. I do. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that, that's interesting indeed. Uh, so then we have, um, you know, so so it is, um, you know, fall fall time. And in Disney, fall, the Halloween boo bash starts in August. So, I mean, you know, just, it it's does just crazy. It does Companies just love to sell holiday oh, merchandise. Right, I feel like there's that, and then people try and go before school starts. But yes, ultimately, yeah, it's more increases that bottom line. It does. Um, so, um, what else is there? Um, we also so check out the books of JB. Check out MrMichaels.com. Check out um, you know all the other um, stuff right that we have. Um, uh, up, we've got Bandcamp exclusive episodes, uh, exclusive episodes that you can find right now on Magic in the Midwest Podcast Bandcamp.com, which is like for as little as three bucks a month, you can help support our um, little podcast here. You know, our, it's our, not so little. You're right, it's not little. I'm kidding. Um, it's 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 you know one thing you have to know about Magic in the Midwest podcast is that we're sort of sometimes a news sometimes a news podcast but really we're just a conversational podcast we are about uh theme parks you know i mean that's Mm -hmm. that's what it is so like you know um i know that the youtube land 
and the world of YouTube and and um, other Disney podcasts, everything is news based, which I get because I'm sure like over time people, you know, probably just like I guess we'll just do the news, um, which is interesting because I you know some podcasts I feel like hmm. have gone to separate shows that are like ours. Oh yes, yes, they like have their news podcast and then they call this other thing where they just kind of converse. And yeah. I feel like those are two different things. They are. Um, and I feel like there was like, let's do something that, something civil, you know what well, I mean? I feel know, like there's iteration upon on, everything. You know, I think especially over the last year and a half, I mean, sometimes you just don't want to focus on the, the news. Right. You I mean, we do. I mean, we, we do a little bit, to but I also extent. think if you're a real or like a true Disney fan and you listen to Disney podcasts or, you know, theme park podcast but mainly disney universal right. you kind of want to hear stuff i mean sometimes you'll learn something you don't know and other times you know you kind of you'll listen to a podcast that's a smackdown between splash mountain and space mountain because you just love it right you just love the rides and right you just want to hear other people talk about it and You're a fan. yeah and i and i think well and here's the other thing too it's like we're sometimes we're a little delayed like we don't we're not a news podcast so like we could talk about something that's to the world today, old news. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to tell you, we're going to talk about Remy's. Well, there's been Remy's stuff all over the internet last week, and the people are already over it. Right. And we're you, not you the kind I'm of saying. podcast that's going to jump on there and do that. We also don't live in Orlando, so we don't have right. the ability to, you know, so that all goes into why we are right. the way that we choose to run the podcast. And that yeah. Of yeah. I was just thinking about that myself. I was just like, you know, we can get in this, like, rat race of news. Mm-mm. But I was like, I don't really know. There's so many different Yeah, but then I also feel like you date your podcast more. You know, right. like if everything is all about, like, you know, you kind of put yourself in that bucket then where you have to be up on it all the mm-hmm. time. And, um, well, we, you know, we have a we have full-time jobs. And a lot of the stuff that we do, you things. can listen to a year later. And yeah. You're going to get just as much out of it as... Yes, and you can, like, you know, the, the, you know, the whole entire anthology of the podcast, I mean... We kind of go through detail, like all these different places, you know, in the resorts and at the resort and in the theme parks. And so, I mean, there's plenty for people to 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 enjoy, you know, rather mm-hmm. than it just being about. And you know what? It's really funny when we did those, <sighs> you know, to look at the metrics on those podcasts, because like the most beloved like resorts on property you could Spiked. tell because they were there were yeah. huge spikes i mean everyone has their own thing that they like and stuff but right, like you right. know polynesian and wilderness lot you know there were some yeah. that were just way up right and there's a reason yeah yeah <laughs> so it's cool yes it is it is so um yeah so through the podcast um that is pretty much you know what we want to talk about as you would know by now um uh but through the podcast uh we have met some great people Ash, tell us. One of which is, who is? Emily. One of which Um, is. One of which, no, who. Uh, She is a vacation planner, but she specializes in Disney and Universal and Disney Cruise Line vacations. So if you're looking to book something, you should contact her. The best way to contact her is through email. Her email is emily at magicalmousetravel.com. Her services are free of charge. She'll send you a no obligation quote and she can help take care of all the things for you. Um, set up a uh, customized itinerary for you, arrange airport transfers and give you recommendations on restaurants yes. and that type of thing. She's very knowledgeable, very sweet. Uh, we love Emily. She's great. So if you're thinking of booking a trip, check her out. Um, give her an email. Let her know that we sent you over. And also, if you're a seasoned planner, but you want you know to help support someone, you can you know book your tickets through her and say like you know I'd rather you know book my own dining or whatever. She'll let you have as much um, control over that as as you wish. So right, something right. to consider. Um, yes. But Emily at MagicalMouseTravel.com. Yes, there you go. So uh, check that out. Um, also, um, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, I do. Here's the other thing um, that I would like to um, talk about today. Um, giving it, you know, so here's the thing about um, so 
let's get down to the brass tacks. We'll talk about just the you know, types of rides, which we've had, we've touched upon this in the past. Um, but Remy's Ratatouille Adventure is coming to Walt Disney World. Now, this was originally in Disneyland Paris. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so Disneyland Paris had this ride many years ago. I think it's like, at this point, it's like, it's almost, I don't know, like 10 years old, I think, over there. Like, Is it's it? It's been a while okay. that it's been open over there, I think. I don't up. know. I could, we could look it up, especially, whatever. Um, but everyone raved about, you know, Remy's Ratatouille adventure. Um... And that was, you know, because that was like what really brought people to Disney's Disney Studios Park over in uh, France in Disneyland, in Disneyland Paris. Um, that really was a big hit for that theme park, which, by the way, that theme park is like the tiniest theme park that Disney's ever built. It's like very, very small. This says July 10th, 2014. Okay. So getting, so it's been what, almost, it's been seven years. Mm-hmm. Um, so seven years it's been open, um, and Disney, I think this was overall like probably part of a grander scheme, um, now that we kind of take a look at what Disney has done in this whole area of the park, the International Gateway, the Skyliner, the Riviera Resort, um, going feeding directly into Epcot, um, and then of course the this big France expansion, which by the way it's like you know I guess everyone is loving the Fran- you know the France expansion area. Okay. Like it's very detailed. It looks really great. There's the new crepery over there, which mm. people love the crepes. Um, um, so people are going there. You know, um, it's it's I guess they didn't skimp out on the detail. Basically what this is, it's almost like it's like a big, huge side of the France Pavilion. So you're going to be walking. It's right next to the bridge in the water. Okay. Mm -hmm. The bridge goes over to the UK Pavilion. Right. And it's right there on the other side. Right. And it goes kind of all the way. It goes like really far back. Um, Obviously, there's really only like a, you know, the, the creperie over here, a place to eat, you know, your crepes. And then the ride itself um and everyone all the other podcasts and youtubes and all this stuff um have already been there detailed it looked through it you know i kind of don't want to do that i kind of want to see it for myself i don't want to go i don't want to watch a ride through i don't do that i usually don't don't watch ride throughs i'm Mm -hmm. not big on spoilers i kind of want to be i already have a general idea of what this ride's going to be um, the official opening date is in like a couple weeks, October 1st, when the 50th anniversary kicks off officially for Walt Disney World, uh, which by the way, they just put up 50 signs on the actual entryway of Walt Disney World property, you know, the big gates. Oh, right. They put 50 signs up. That's okay. brand new, brand new news. Um, <clears throat> so now this is a clone of a ride that's in Europe, which is fine. Um, we're also getting a clone of Tron, which is in Shanghai, uh, mm-hmm. which we're welcome. We, of course, we want to ride these rides that we've never, we haven't been to Disneyland Paris or Shanghai Disneyland. Um, uh, so we don't know our Shanghai Disney Resort or whatever it's called. Um, now, the type of ride that it is, is a trackless ride system. So when when you first when it first came out in Disneyland Paris, like people were like, "Wow, this is amazing!" Just the technology itself is amazing. That right. we're not on a track; we're just in a vehicle and we're moving through this area, mm-hmm. you know, independent of a of a rail. Um, so, but here's the thing: so for Disney World, you know, fans, we have two rides like that already. Right. We have. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, and we have Rise of the Resistance. So that kind of, you know, that kind of takes that out of it, you know. Um, but from all, from what everybody's saying, is that the ride is still great, and you'll really enjoy it, and it's something that everybody can ride. Like, the whole family can ride this. Right. Um, so it's a dark ride, trackless. 
use of screens and practical effects. I mean, it kind of seems like to me it's Spider-Man, a, a trackless Spider-Man, just like Mickey and Minnie's Runaway, Runaway Railway. Like, except for Mickey and Minnie's, you don't wear glasses. In Remy's, you do. Okay. So it's sort of, to me, it's like this is the same system without a track as a Spider-Man Dark Ride in, in Isles okay. of Adventure. Because you're using practical effects mixed with right. screens. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, so I don't know. Um, I wonder how the general public will feel about Remy. You know, the, like the Disney World fans. Here, here are my thoughts. I think that, I mean, like you said, we're hearing good reviews. Um, I hope, I think, yes, uh, you know, we have already experienced this trackless ride system, so no one's going to be, I mean, not, not blown away, but it's not new technology in the way that, like, this is the first ride in Disney World that will be this way. So yeah. everyone sort of experienced it if they've been there before and right. been on, uh, you know, Rise or Mickey Minis. Yeah. Um, but I think that the perspective, you know, if you've read anything about it, you're kind of like the size of Remy in the kitchen. Yeah. And so, like, these things are really tall and falling around you and stuff, and I'm sure that that's really cool. Yeah. My biggest thing about it is that, in a way, I hope that it... You know, I'm sure it's really good, but what I've actually heard from or read is that like it it belongs. And what I'm taking from that is is this isn't something that takes over the France Pavilion. It fits in there. It's a little family ride. It doesn't take like my thing about Frozen is that like Norway just is frozen now. Like the whole thing is frozen. Like this is sort of back off in the back of the pavilion and you know, maybe it's not going to, like, absolutely blow you away, but it's a cute ride, it's really neat, and you're going to enjoy it. Okay, so that's interesting. So you're saying, well, that that kind of speaks to the Ratatouille movie. Like, like it's not very popular. No. It's not. It's not. And it's, it's not it's that not great. It's not Frozen-level popular. No. And the only reason why it was put in Disneyland Paris is because, <laughs> obviously, it's French. it's French. Right. And it was such a big hit over there that they're moving it over here. Had that not happened, they would have never developed a ride, I don't think. Well, like, they definitely needed to do something in that Disney Studios. The reason why Remy was even built was because Disney realized we should do something European, you know, for Europeans. So right. we should tailor a ride to them, and that's what where Remy's Ratatouille Adventure came along because nobody was going to that Disney Studios park because mm-hmm. there's like hardly anything in it. There was a kind of a you know cut rate Tower of Terror over there, and I mean there's really yeah. there wasn't much else. But I mean, if you really read deeper into the reviews of people that go there all the time, that's kind of more the vibe I'm getting. Not that this is like amazing and it's going to blow you I away. Think You're it not hearing. Have been. What you're going to hear when you hear about Rise of the Resistance. People also don't really say that about Mickey and Minnie, so that blows you away. It's cute. It's really neat. I love it. But I don't don't think of that ride as something that's going to blow me away. I think Tron will. But I feel like this ride, because of what it is and where it is... It's just it. People say it belongs. It feels that's, like it belongs. See that. See, and 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 that's the other thing too. Not every ride needs to be blow your mind crazy. Mm-mm. Great. You know what I mean? I'd but, much rather it belong. Right. Right. So, and that's an interesting thing as well. And I wonder why you know Disney resisted that Mount Fuji volcano, um, you know thrill ride that they were going to mm-hmm. do in Japan. And I wonder if they thought about, was it, were they thinking about the experience of people at world showcase? And now I'm wondering to myself too, you know, will, will there ever, do you think there is ever a place for a triple a, you know, thrill ride in the world showcase? What do you mean, triple A? What does that mean? Um, like top of the line. Oh, like, like the strange. triple triple A rated? No, you never heard that before. Like you know, triple like A batteries? five star rated, like you know, deluxe. You know, triple anyway, A. Just, just like I, just I know, like battery gold. and baseball. Triple A. That's it. 
That's my only reference to them. Okay, um, then just like a five-star hotel. I just never. I would never be like, oh, that's triple A. I would be like, it's five stars, top notch. I would never say that's triple A. I'd be like, well, do we need to call it car service? Com- I mean, it's a pretty common way to rate I've things. I've never heard anyone say that. Three A's? Yeah. No one. Zero. Like a- not even you. I think you're just trying to make it a thing just, right now because you're I think you're sort of an idiot. Yeah, you're, you're, you're trying to pass it off because no one no. says that. Like, a, you know. You've never used that before. You've never yeah, been but like, I've oh my read gosh, it. that's triple A. Triple A, high budget, big budget. I'm going to put this up on the gram and I know who's going to win this I'm going to win. No. I'm going to win. Anyway, um, so uh, can, you, can we just get to the question? You're a triple A idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> I've never heard of that. I don't even well, know what I that means. Well, I could have means. figured out what it meant, but I've never heard I anyone describe anything like that before. I don't understand what that means. This is uh, JB's stubbornness, where he has to put me I, down wait to a feel minute. Who's better. Who's being stubborn? No, Who's you being are. less open-minded? Less open-minded? Who's being less that, open-minded? Ashley. That, she doesn't think that AAA relevant. rating is a thing. But it is. No, I just don't think it's common. I've just never really heard anyone use it like in... Talking back and forth about things. Okay, so so back to the question, Ash. Moron. You idiot. Um, <laughs> hashtag burn it down. Hashtag where are the deep papers. Hashtag deep papers help. See? Hashtag. This goes a little over the top. <laughs> <laughs> Here are the... Be- the, the oh, gosh. Burr, burr, burr. All right, what is the question? You see, you totally forgot the question, so I have to repeat it. No, I totally forgot the... Well, because you went on this big rant. What is it? Um, I have to get up now. Um, it so, is... I don't know. Fill up the, the airspace of your... So the desk. question was, like, is there a place in the world showcase? Because, you know, you said that Frozen was... You think Frozen is too big. Of a franchise to be in the World Showcase. It should be somewhere else because Frozen detracts from the thesis of World Showcase, which is reality, nonfiction, Norway celebrating an actual country and a culture within the real world. So what I'm saying is, do you think that there is a place in World Showcase for a um, Triple A, I got you. A Rise like, of the Resistance type of, you know, grandiose flight of passage, big budget. You know, I mean, maybe, attraction. maybe over time my opinion about this will shift. But right now, I feel like the answer to that is no. I think the main attraction should be the pavilion. And if something helps plus it, that's fine. But I don't think it should overtake the pavilion, which is the vibe I'm getting from Remy's is that it's just, it, it pluses the... The France Pavilion. Whereas Frozen was this huge moneymaker, and they're like, where can we jam this? Oh, we can jam it in Norway, and we can just have it totally take over the Maelstrom. And that when you go into Norway, like, to me, I just think of it as Frozen now. Like, that's just, yes, there's other stuff there, but it's just the line and everything for Frozen. It's just, that's all that it feels like to me now. Okay. And that's what draws people there that otherwise wouldn't go. Now, that's going to happen in the beginning for anything, but I just feel like there's a difference between, hey, we're going to take advantage of this, and hey, this will really add something here. But but the structurally, but here's the other thing they did with Remy's that they didn't do with Frozen. Remy's, they thought about the people flow. Yes. And they built decide. out an entire side block, basically. Well, and the thing is, is not every pavilion can you do that. Right. Because right. But you know, there is France a big... has the bridge, so there's space over there. Now, there are some spaces for other pavilions, but there's probably not a great ability to do that in all right. pavilions. And in, in Norway, they made no attempt whatsoever. It's just right. sort of like, oh, here's a ride that people can learn on and is part of the heritage. You know, we'll just jam Frozen in it. I feel like there is like an expansion pad in between Mexico and Norway, though. And they did build out more but they didn't want to actually build an entirely new ride but they did no. build out a big section for of all norway the money they made it frozen they didn't want to use it right so i mean it's interesting so so i think they learned their lesson with frozen and and maelstrom they were like we should not like shoehorn 
it into the existing place because that's too hard. Let's build out and exp- like let's build something else out. So I think when we go past frats, I'll be interested to see, and then it's a virtual queue as well for whatever reason. I don't even think that's going to be a thing. I think they're going to do the virtual queue for a little bit and then they'll just drop it because they yeah, want a genie plus. I, it. I agree. Um, they want a genie plus that stuff. So genie plus it. Yeah. So basically, like they, ha- you have the people coming down. I wonder how, how much that will absorb the crowds, like that whole area. I'm sure it will. You know, <laughs> but what? <laughs> Just thinking about. Triple A. You were so angry. Like, triple uh, A, dude. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have to put the E on this one. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so, right, right. So basically, you know, we have this big area, and and everybody's saying, like you said, Ash, that it fits. And I mean, I think you're right. We don't maybe need. I guess we don't need a big you know, um, attraction, thrill ride attraction in World Showcase because that would, I think, detract I mean, that's not what it's supposed to be. Thrill ride should be in other places. And, uh, you know, I know everyone thinks that I'm like a horrible person for this whole Frozen thing. I mean, I amp it up a little bit because everyone writes in about it and they seem to like when I get really irritated about things. But, you know, I love Frozen the ride. We go on it every time we go. Yes. It's it's just, you know... Yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's a difference between what they did there and then what they're doing in. Yeah. So should there rounds. be a big AAA? You say no. I wonder what other people think. Yeah, you I know? mean, you know, it could go either way. I just, I think, like when you go on, I can never remember the Grand Fiesta Tour, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I it used feel to be like called it's Rio del Tiempo. Eventually, it'll have more of a Coco vibe. I feel like that's gonna happen. That doesn't really bother me as much, and I can't exactly pinpoint why. Maybe just because it's not like this. I don't know. It feel like it feels to me like it would add to the pavilion. Like there's people come there, they like it. It's not something that's gonna overrun everything. But I don't like when they put IP and they just like jam it somewhere that doesn't belong. Right, right. And I just don't know if a, a AAA thrill ride, whatever the hell that is. No, no big lie. budget. No, I know, I know. I just, I don't know. I don't feel like it belongs there. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm wondering too. Like, yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I think I don't think it maybe it, it shouldn't go into, you know, um, the the world showcase because the world showcase for the most part is about eating food and experiencing cultures and drinking and. You know, more, more basically adult-oriented things. Uh, but, I mean, it, I guess it is, you know, part of Disney's strategy to keep people going to the World Showcase. Even though World Showcase, they don't need... They don't need... They don't need to, like, keep people out of the World Showcase. You know what I mean? They just... They really don't. So, I mean, they, they have enough. But I guess for families, it is good. So now, I mean, we count the attractions at World Showcase. You've got Grand Fiesta Tour... Frozen. You've got Frozen, and now you have Remy's Ratatouille Adventure that are ride-based. There's the bomb again. Um, <laughs> ride-based attractions that kids can now look forward to, you know, going into. Like, if Remy was open, the last time we were there at at, at Disney, you were like, I don't want to go to World Showcase. What's there to do for Harrison to do, blah, blah, blah. Not that Harrison, Harrison can enjoy it, I think, even now. Um you know, but now it's it'd be more of a reason to keep to go into there, right? Yeah, but don't you feel like that's kind of the point to not do stuff like that? Like it's nice to have parts of Disney that are more like not for geared towards little kids all right, the time. Right. Like I don't think every part of Disney has to do that. Well, I don't. I agree with you. I agree. Like with you. I kind of look forward to him. Like yes, I think he could have you a good time were, you in there, but he would much stop rather go in on there, test track and all that stuff because that's what he wanted to do: soaring and test track. He Just would. Saying. I know. I think had the trip been different, we had more time and we could have stayed later and, and went back into the World Showcase. I mean, part of it was because Epcot was such a cluster when we were there. Yeah. So it took like Future forever really. to get over there, and yeah. then he wanted to go on test track. And Soren, so I was like, I don't want to go back over there yeah. now. 
I think, you know, he was excited about the rides, and he'll be excited about these other rides, too. But I'm also looking forward to him getting older and, you know, being more into the stores and stuff like that. I don't think everything needs to be flushed out with Disney IP for five-year-olds. No, no. Um, And then, then, so, and then, of course, you know, people are some critical elements that you know criticisms of remy's is that there are screens okay and people really rail against universal and their use of screens yeah but don't you feel like that's because they do it for everything they do have a lot of screens like i don't think disney does it for everything as much no but not as much but there are you know they do use a lot of screens um flight of passage obviously is entirely based on a screen but it's done so well it doesn't you just don't even care. You know what I mean? But, you know, um, Gringotts, right? A lot of screens. Um, I think I, that ride is so overrated. I don't understand it. Right. Escape from Gringotts. Well, it's okay So, So, well, here's the, here's the, begs the question. Here's another question for you, Ash. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to try and say this without So that I can understand. You. Yes, break it down oh to gosh, idiot Ash terminology. Um, okay. <laughs> Jock. Jock. Uh, she's just got a jock braid to do to um, play softball. I graduated <laughs> in the top of my class and scored higher than you on the ACT. No, you and, didn't. Yes, I did. No, what I did didn't. you score? You, you didn't. What, what did you score? I don't then? even remember. Oh, okay, so let's how, keep going. Yeah, no, I definitely scored I higher. I definitely. Than you. You yeah. moron. <laughs> Some of us are talented in multiple areas of oh life. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so... Here's my next question. People that don't like screens, mm-hmm. what what to you, Ash, is more immersive? Like a really detailed simulated screen mm-hmm. or practical like sets that you know are built to scale and not like real? But like what's what makes it feel less real is what I'm saying. A screen or an actual practical effect? I mean, I think the reality is is that when a screen is done really well, it feels more immersive. Okay. Like, but I feel like I have more respect when it's, like, Built not out. a screen. Yeah. But, I mean, that it can only get you so far, especially with, you know, younger audiences and stuff. But, yeah. I mean, I think part of our generation liking the practical stuff is that, like, that's what we grew up with. and Yeah. Um, but, I mean, there's no arguing between, like, what's more immersive, Splash Mountain or Flight of Passage. Right. Right. I mean, answer the question. Which one? Immersive. Well, not which one do you enjoy more? Which one's more immersive? And it, there's no way you're not saying Flight of Passage. I know you're just being stubborn and you're trying to act like you, but you're lying. If you from say a Splash from Mountain. a purely like experiential no. angle, no. like the experience of no. the ride, Flight of Passage. No. Well, yes, of course. It's it makes you you're like emotional yeah, on that but, ride. Yeah, but but it's it yes. You go on Splash Mountain, and the reality is there's characters that don't move. And then there's characters that, like, kind of move, characters that are supposed to move and don't work anymore. And we love it because Splash Mountain's a great ride. It's I, not as immersive, I, though. I, yeah. I, okay, but I don't so think you're, every So you're ride, pro-screen. No, I don't. I think screens need to be used in the right way, and they don't need to be used all the time. I also don't think, I think this whole obsession with, Im, like, immersion is nuts. Like, you don't, it doesn't need to be immersive everywhere you go, like, that you, like, I don't know. I think there should be a mix, and when one thing is relied on too much, then, like, I don't want to go on every ride and have screens everywhere. So you're saying a balance of both is is, to you ideal but if you were to say purely physical construction versus a screen that might actually be more immersive you'll go with the screen over the immersion i guess it like depends on the ride effects. but i mean look at rise of the resistance there's a mix there and they right. do it really well and they're not relying on screens for laziness yeah they're doing it to make the ride Plus the level the that they want to right. make it which right. they couldn't do with practical effects just you wouldn't be able to do it right right so there, I think it's really great. There are other times, like if you're looking at Fast and Furious, that's just laziness <laughs> and dumbness 
and stupidity that I also kind of love, but it's horrible. All right. You know. So so you're well, like I love dinosaur. The black sheets, the dino heads. There's no screens there. So let's go we we should do a separate podcast. Maybe we should do that for the band cap exclusive, like which rides are the utilize screens the best. Well, and look at Rise of the Resist or no, uh Flight of Passage. It is all screen, right? But the Except way they the designed ride the vehicle. ride system and the thought they put into that, make, you know, it wasn't laziness. This isn't just like, oh, let's just do a screen. That's the part where I think screens take a hit. Okay. Okay. So, um, okay. So it's interesting. We're going to have to figure out. We should go through rides that have screens and, and kind of rank them and talk about which ones utilize the screens the best. And which ones don't. Like, I think that Gringotts, it is lacking something. And I think it's because it's really, they could have done some practical effects. Like, I don't feel like there's any. And it just feels like, you can feel it. I feel like I'm kind of moving around a movie theater and it's just not very good. I think Forbidden Journey is better because there's a mix. But I think they definitely missed out on, like, they just tried to, like, go through the movies real quick. Right. They should have just come up with an original concept. Like they did with Hagrid's. And people love Hagrid's. Right. Because it just isn't like trying to go through movies one through eight or books one through seven, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like they just tried to like throw a bunch of stuff also, in there. Also, I feel feels... like the quality of the screen in Universal Islands of Adventure for Forbidden Journey is not as good. I think in Hollywood they have a better screen and projection system. And that does sort of take you out of it too a little bit. Like you get to the point in. Forbidden Journey, where you're on the the yucca arm, as they you know, that's what the that's what it is that you're you're on, um, and you get to the point where you hit the screen, you're like, oh, this this is a very low res. It just looks it is looks not great. Like here's the screen, you know, and and I think that's probably not the best use of it, you know. Whereas like, but it's so mixed in with the practical effects. And I know people aren't going to like me for that. I think Forbidden Journey is it's, cool it's a ride, really cool and ride. I always want to go on it when I'm there. Right. I didn't go on it until recently. Like the time we went out together was the first time I ever went on it. Right. So I was in my 30s. I yeah. love Harry Potter, but I didn't go on it when it opened in 2008 or nine, I, whenever it opened. So like I don't just love it, and I don't view it from that lens of 10 years ago. I view it through like. You know, it feels a little hodgepodgey to me. Like, we took this from the movie, and then we made this one for the ride, and we're putting it together, and then, oh, here's spiders. And then, like, it just feels like we just took a bunch of different things. A bunch of scarier stuff ride. and put them in the ride. You yeah. know, where I think that's why Hagrid's is so popular. They're just like, this is our idea. It's an original idea. We're just building something out from the movie that we can make completely yeah. ours. Yeah. And that's why it's so good. Right. You know, it's crazy, too. With Remy, you're the size of Remy. Which I think is cool. Yeah. Um, which is funny because they actually came up with the Tan and Bob Taylor's ride. And that, that was, you know, because the Taylors are so small. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm really excited to see how they do that size element. You know, because I was like, oh, man, like I thought about that way before Remy's opened. I was like, how cool would it be to be in a ride where you're actually small and everything's really big around you? You mm-hmm. know, I mean, I did that a little with Honey, I Shrunk the Audience. But that was just a show, a 3D show. Um, so, I mean, but I'm sure Remy's will be really cool. I'm sure we'll love it. We'll want to go back on it again. I'm sure Harrison will love it. Um, you know, but it's, it's, you know, it's interesting because, you know, yeah, I think when screens are done right and there's a good mix of both practical effects and screen effects, then it's fine. Unless it's like a back flight of passage where it's pretty much just dull you know screen or back to the future the ride when it first opened i mean it's pretty much all screen yes you have the vehicle that you kind of move around in right um but you know yeah i don't know so i mean it's it's an interesting situation like will this is the dark ride of the disney now it's like a mixture of it's trackless okay it's trackless it's you know, I guess it could be changed if they wanted. They wanted to. They could kind of mix up the ride if they really wanted to. So you have a trackless system, mixture of practical effects and screen. Like that's kind of what every dark ride will be, I think, from this point forward. Um, you know, I don't know how you. You know, here's my next question. 
Mm-hmm. Would you prefer, like, a Little Mermaid, Ariel's Undersea Adventure, what is it called, Voyage? No, no, it's not Voyage, that was the show. I actually don't know what, what is, the name of it is. I think it's Ariel's Undersea Adventure or something. Uh, but whatever, whatever. The Little Mermaid was, like, the last dark ride they did. Before. Like, you know, major big dark ride that had the track Mm -hmm. and has like practical animatronics in it you know so that's kind of the that's kind of the begs the question then would you want a you know um incredibles type attraction would you want it to be more like little mermaid with ariel or would you want it to be more like remy in a mixture of both you know what i mean it's like that's where we're at you know and i don't think that it means like because i love the little mermaid but part of that is because that's like the first movie i remember go going to see in the theater and it was really popular when i was growing up i think i was like three when it came out right um so i know it's nostalgia for me but i think it's good to have a balance i don't think every ride needs to be this like amazing immersive like intense screen combo all the time I just think there needs to be a balance. I can't say whether I feel like Incredible should be one or the other. I just think that... You know, it's wild. Think about this, too. Think about Pirates and Haunted Mansion. There's there's really no, like... There's there's Pepper's Ghost. There's, like, effects in it. But, like, screens yeah, but you know aren't what? heavily used. I feel like the reason why those stand up is obviously because they're classics. But they're actually dark. Little Mermaid is not dark. So I feel like you can kind of see a lot more, and it True. almost ages the ride more. Okay, okay. You know, um, it's the reason why dinosaur works. <laughs> There's a lot you can't see. <laughs> you know what I mean, though? I mean, Haunted Mansion works because, like, you know, you're filling in the blanks with your mind, and there's a lot of cool stuff in detail to see. And same with Pirates. There's a lot that you can't see. Yeah. It's dark, it's spooky, it leads, you know, it helps yeah. with, like, the yeah. ambiance and everything. Little Mermaid, I don't know if it really benefits for it to be what it is. You know what I'm saying? Because the lights are just, like, on. You can, like, see everything, like, all the machines It's moving. interesting what they did, too. Like, they, the way that they designed Ariel, she is the cartoon, not cartoon, the animated version mm-hmm. of her just in three dimensions. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, the hair is not, like, textured. It is interesting, like, when you see your hair. Yeah, it's, like, plastic. Yeah, it's... Looking. Yeah. But, I mean, I still love the ride. No, I love the ride. I mean, I think most of the reason you love the ride, though, is because the of music, the song. The music, the nostalgia. Yeah, the music is really good from that movie, and that's why. You know, I kind of like that they take you through. But, I mean, they did a good job there. What's the best part of that movie? The music. Yeah. So they just take you through kind of, like, a musical version of the yeah, film. Yeah. And I think that was the right thing to do. This is fascinating. You know, because to me it's Because I'm like, making lots of great points. No. Um, uh, but to me... I'm like triple A with my points. <laughs> oh my points. gosh, triple A. I'm like triple A <laughs> with all up, my input up. right now. I can't believe you've never heard that before. Anyway. Um, but no, I, I, I think, Ash, that it just begs the question. The most popular rides that people go on you know, the classic, you know, amazing rides, you know, didn't rely on those. And people keep coming back to those um, over and over again. Yeah, I but just how wonder... many? How many can you name that are like that? Space Mountain? Small World. Small World. Okay. I feel like I have a counterpoint to that. I feel like a lot of people love it and they do it, but they also get annoyed with it a little bit. Yeah. Peter Pan, Haunted Mansion, Pirates. Are probably those those are the probably the main five, right? Spaceship Earth. Spaceship Earth. Now I could argue that all of them except for Small World don't have a lot of light in them. They're darker. Like actual dark rides. Like it's hard for me to think of the Little Mermaid as a dark ride because it's. But it is. It is technically, but it's not like I don't think of the Haunted Mansion and Little Mermaid are two different. Right. Like, one's way darker than the other. Pirates yeah. is way darker than Little Mermaid. I think... But I also think it's not bad to move forward with technology. No, I don't know. Like, it's Walt not. always wanted... You Keep know, I feel forward. like if once he... If he was around for a track list, that's what he would want to do. Right. 
Like, why would we move backwards? Right. We're going to move forwards with this and use the best technology that yes. we can all the yeah. time. Yes, absolutely. So it's interesting. I don't know. It's just an it's interesting... It's like Jaws holds up because you don't see, see the, the shark. shark. Like, I feel like there's a lot you don't see yeah. in those other dark rides. That, right. You know. Interesting. I, we should put a poll up. And I feel like some of them have aged Practical. more than others. And I don't mind that they've aged, but I feel like Peter Pan has definitely aged more yeah. than Haunted Mansion or Pirates. And out of those two, I would say Haunted Mansion holds up the best, probably. Yeah. Because of... Yeah. I mean, I think the Pirates are great, but they're also, like, far enough away. Like, the, yeah. the people are far enough away that you're not really seeing up close how they look. I mean, I love it. I'm not trying to take anything away from pirates. I know it's your favorite ride, but Haunted Mansion probably holds up the best to all of it because yeah. of what it is. Okay. Well, it'll be interesting to see the reaction that we have to Remy's. We'll probably we won't be there for a while, but uh, it will be interesting to see what people's general reactions are to it. I'm sure that will be positive. I'm sure it will be, you know, a, a good thing. So, but all right. Well, we Ash. talked about that a lot longer than I thought we would. Right. Well, it was lots of it was lots a triple to mine A there. conversation. It was <laughs> triple A rated. <laughs> uh, Make sure gentlemen. you rate us um, and review us. One of the options is triple A, probably <laughs> because it's so popular that that's how people rate things. You know. <laughs> Don't listen to this crazy person in front of me. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Yes, please rate and review us. Triple A rate us on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, Stitcher, Deezer, uh, YouTube. Like and subscribe to us on YouTube. That would be fantastic if you could. Um, we are um, um, always look forward to hearing from you as well. So reach out to us on Instagram. Um, or at Magic in the Midwest Podcast at gmail.com. You could write in and let us know what you think of the podcast or just review us and let us know what you think of the podcast. That would be even better. Mm-hmm. So, um, all right. Uh, anything else to add, Ash, before we get out of here? Mm-mm. All right. Nope. All right. Ladies and gentlemen from the Midwest, see you later.